earth is happening? Maybe you've asked that question. For the last couple of years, it's really been... Yeah, we all know. We've come through some storms. We've come through some uncertain times. And we know that we are in the end times. Now, I can speak a lot on the end times. When I was a young Christian, I studied the end times a lot. In those days, 1988 was said or expected to be the coming of the Lord Jesus for the bride. Because in those days, the Bible scholars, they thought that a generation is only 40 years. And 1948, Israel became a nation again. And Jesus said, now you keep an eye on the fig tree. And when the fig tree begins to blossom, you must know it is time. Keep an eye on the fig tree and all the trees. And he said, surely I say to you that this generation who sees this will not pass away. So we expected the Lord Jesus to come in 1988. Now I was a baby Christian. I was say five years. I was in the Word and studying the end times. I read every book I could get hold of to understand the end times. But the Bible was, came alive to me and I, was, I just realized how true the Bible is. The Word of God. And if you want to speak about the end times, you need a lot of time to get all the scriptures to, to weave them together. We need a lot of time. Now, we don't always have enough time. I feel I don't have enough time. But what I'll do, I'll do it in little chunks. Over the next couple of weeks, I'll do it in little chunks. Try and bring things together. Because Jesus warned, He said, Beware, pass up, that the Alnimus Lai Beware that you are not deceived. So, in the end times, there's a lot of deception. It's just like that. So, as Christians, we need to be awake. We need to be aware what is going on. And we need to be alert. I like the, those three English words. To be awake, to be aware, we need to know what's going on. And to be alert. Ready. Say ready. ready. Say to somebody, I'm ready. I'm ready. I can't answer everything that's happening in the world, but I can try and give you the word of God and show you how things are knitted together concerning the end times. And I'm going to start off this morning with wars. Because what we are seeing now, over the last couple of years, are now intensifying as we're coming to the end times. Jesus said that it would be like that. It would be like a woman that is in labor. Like a baby that's going to get born. There are, there are pains. Okay, and, and the ladies that have had babies know that the pains don't, the, the pain just, you know, I don't know, but I know what my wife told me. Okay, so <laughs> forgive me if, I've got, if I get it wrong. But you know, there's a pain, and then there's, there's no pain. And then all of a sudden, there's another pain, and then there's no pain. And then there's a little bit sharper pain. And then there's no pain. And then another sharper pain. And another sharper pain. And another sharper pain. And it becomes like that. The pain. Is that right? And it becomes more intense. More intense. Until something happens. There's a breakthrough. And some little baby is born. And so it is with the coming and the birthing of God's kingdom on the planet. Now, I'm going to speak about the wars, because the wars are significant. But the wars are not everything. There are many other things happening in the world around us. Many things happening in the church. 
But I want you to understand that Jerusalem, the Bible said the battle for Jerusalem will intensify in the end times. In Zechariah 12 verse 3 we read, On that day I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock. All the nations will gather against it to try to move it. But they will only hurt themselves. So in the end times, the focus will be on Jerusalem. The entire world will begin to focus on Jerusalem and try to capture, to take Jerusalem. But who knows that Jerusalem belongs to God? It belongs to the nation of Israel. Now, 1948, this is very significant. God gave, the Lord brought Israel back to their country. And in 1967, he gave Jerusalem back to them. So as far as God is concerned, Jerusalem belongs to the Jews, belongs to the Lord. It's a city of God. Amen. But there's something about Jerusalem. And even now, we can see in the Middle East, the wars that are going, the proxy wars that are going on, coming from the nations around Israel, terrorizing Israel, trying to break their, their faith, their resolve, trying to destroy them. But in the end times, there are coming wars against Israel, against Jerusalem. Jesus said in Matthew 24, he said, And ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye you, that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass, but the end is not yet. So Jesus says, when, we, when you see all these uh, wars going on, understand, these are signposts, these are signals. If you have a close walk with the Lord, you will, you will get to know that He gives you signposts in your life. He will show you some things concerning your life, signposts. He will tell you some things to come in future. And when you get to that signpost, you know I'm here now. Because the Lord showed me something. I'll speak more about that just now. There are three wars. Three wars that I see. I know there are Bible scholars that teach us there are only two wars. The Ezekiel 38 war and then Armageddon at the end. But I see three wars in the Bible concerning Israel. I'm not speaking about the Russia war now with Ukraine. Those wars, yeah, we'll see those wars. We might even see more serious wars than that. But I see three wars that will threaten the very existence of Israel. The number one war will be an Iran invasion. Psalm 83. When the prince of Persia, now the prince of Persia is an is a ruling spirit over Persia. Now Persia is not only Iran, but there are a lot of Islamic states, nations around Iran that are under the control of Persia, the prince of Persia. I think we know that there are territorial spirits. These are angels, fallen angels that they rule over cities, over nations, over towns. And they are allies of Satan. Because Satan is the god of this world. Jesus said he's the god of this world. So this whole battle is to destroy the kingdom of Satan. And to bring it to an end. And to bring the kingdom of God. And then there's going to be a thousand year of peace on the planet. Wow. A thousand year of peace. No wars. No death. No sickness. Joy. Worshipping the king. Experiencing his love and goodness. Can you say amen this morning? Now Jesus already fought the battle. He already gained the victory. But it's almost 2,000 years now. And I believe the church age is 2,000 years. I believe that. I can, I'll show you later, but not, to, not today. Because I want to focus on wars. To speak about the end times is not that easy because your brain goes all, all over. So I'm going to focus on the wars. So 
what happened to me in 1988, I was in Bloemfontein. I was not in the ministry. I was a young Christian, and my, my work sent me to Bloemfontein, I, and I had to go and do a job there for them. I was staying in a hotel there, and early in the morning, three, four o'clock in the morning, all of a sudden, I'm awake like, like that. Amazing. It's just like awake. But when I got awake, I was, I was looking down. I was looking down on the planet. And I saw the maps of the, like, you know, you, know uh, you get these Atlas map books. And I was seeing a map of, the whole, of all the, the different countries, nations, continents. And they were all different colors. And there was a yellow colored nation, Persia, Persia. And the voice spoke to me and said to me, you need to keep your eyes fixed on this nation. Because the prince of Persia is going to act again and he is responsible for all the terror in the world. Now I was praying at that time because I was expecting the rapture is going to take place. This was in 1988. And all of a sudden I woke up. I thought I was awake, but it was like the first vision, open vision that I experienced. And the Lord showed me something to come in the future. That's why I believe there's going to be an Iran invasion. Read that in Psalm 83, when the Prince of Persia acts again. Now, I believe, and, and this is my personal thing. I believe it is a signpost that God gave me. So that I will know when the time is, when he's coming. Nobody knows the, the day and hour. Can you say amen? So can you say amen? Nobody knows the exact time. But we, we know more or less when he's coming. And we will know as we get closer. So I'm bringing that up this morning as a signpost. So what I'm looking for, I'm looking for a war that's going to be between Iran and all his allies. The second war that's going to take place is the, the Russian invasion. Ezekiel 38 called the Gog War. And then there's going to be the Armageddon War. At the end of the tribulation period, we read about that in Revelation 19, Zechariah 14, when the Antichrist and China and other nations, when they come against Jerusalem. Now let's look at the Iran War. Iran and its allies is going to launch a massive missile attack upon Israel. There are thousands, thousands, thousands of missiles and rockets and drones and things that they've got ready now. They've surrounded Israel. And at the word, at the right moment, they are going to launch that upon Israel. Trying to overpower Israel. Trying to destroy Israel. To wipe Israel out and take Jerusalem. And this is what they are saying. We will not back off from the annihilation of Israel. And this is coming from the Ayatollah of Iran. It's coming from the military leaders. It's also coming from this man, Ibrahim Raisi. Now, not so long ago, I must say probably six months, maybe eight months ago, I was watching a YouTube channel that I've never seen before. And it's a young man that was reporting upon Israel and what is happening in Israel. And he went and he, he, he pictured... He, painted a picture about what is happening in Israel now and what is happening in Iran and how Iran is getting ready and, and all of a sudden he started speaking about Ibrahim Raisi and he said that this man Ibrahim Raisi he is now the new president of Iran he said but I want to tell you now we need to keep an eye on him He spoke the exact words that I heard. We need to keep an eye on him. And then he went on and he said, Do you know that this man, in 1988, 
He was a prosecutor in Iran. That was his position. And in those days, the people of Iran who resisted that Iranian regime and rebelled against it, those people were brought to trial. And this man sentenced them to death. And thousands upon thousands upon thousands of those people were sent to death. He killed thousands and thousands of his own people. So much so that he became known in those days as the butcher. And he said, now just imagine, this man is now president of Iran. And immediately I knew the Lord was, he was pointing something out to me that he showed me. Keep your eye on this nation, Persia, because the prince of Persia is going to act again and he is responsible for all the terror in the world. Now Iran has been a sponsor of terrorism all over the world, but especially now in the end times through Hamas, Hezbollah, all these uh, different kinds of terrorist groups. And Iran is waging a proxy war against Israel. Iran is already fighting, but they're not themselves in the war. They're fighting through, through these other terrorist organizations against Israel. But the time is coming that Iran is going, going to come openly and they're going to launch missiles against Israel. And that will be a sign for me. And you can take it this morning. I'm sharing it with you. Because I believe shortly afterwards, there is going to be a private event. Say private event. And what is that private event? That is going to be the sudden departure of the church. The sudden departure of the church. And we'll speak about that next Sunday, Lord willing. Who wants to know about that? Okay. I'm looking forward to that. I'm hanging on for that. And the Lord has given me through the years, He gave me some visions about that. So I'm hanging on in faith. So what these people are saying, we are going to annihilate Israel. We're going to wipe them off the face of the earth. This is coming from Iran and the nations around. Who knows God is not going to allow that. Okay, let me read to you now Psalm 83 because I, I want you to see the scriptures so you can see. Psalm 83 verse 4 says, you can go home and go and read the entire chapter. Come, they say, let us wipe out Israel as a nation. We will destroy the very memory of its existence. Yes, this was their unanimous decision. They signed a treaty as allies against you. There's the word. The Bible said, they're going to come. They're going to say, let us wipe Israel out completely. They're going to come together. But at midnight, and I believe shortly after that, war. And that war, are you listening now? Are you listening now? My wife and myself, we were watching another pastor last night. And every now and then he would say, Cake for me. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> what I'm saying, are you listening? Shortly, I believe. Shortly after that, Iran. I don't think it's going to last long. Because it's going to be. The enemy is going to get a huge surprise. 
<laughs> because, you know, if God is for you, who can be against you? And you cannot touch Israel because Israel is the apple of God's eye. Not because they believe, believe they don't believe in Jesus, but because they are part of the Abrahamic covenant. They are part of the covenant. And God closed their eyes for our sake. For 2,000 years, He shut their eyes. When they rejected Jesus, He shut their eyes to be merciful to us so that we can hear the good news. We can hear the gospel. We can come to faith in Jesus. But that time is coming to an end. And then God's going to turn back to them. And this war, this war, this Iranian-Israel war, for me, is going to be the sign that now we're right there at the door. And the sudden departure of the church is going to take place. And I say that for me is midnight. Midnight hour. If you look at the watch, there's going to be a private event. And I want to emphasize this so that we can understand the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ first happens as a private event. He comes for his pride. He's not coming for the world. He's not coming to judge the world. He's coming for his pride. He's coming in secret. He's coming at a time that most people don't expect him. And he's coming to snatch away the bride. It's going to be a private event. He comes to say, die van die nacht. Is jylle saam met my? Ons toe ons klinkies was, dan sê hy gaan weerkom, hy sal weerkom, want hy laai in. As hy weerkom, dan kom haal hy sy perels. Al sy perels, jylle ken hy die wieke dan nog. Al sy vrye perels. Exactly. Jesus, I'm coming like a thief in the night. Now listen, a thief does not send you an SMS to tell you or warn you I'm coming to break into your house. He comes in secret. And that's exactly what the Bible says. This is what's going to happen. Now that is not the second coming of Jesus. That is the private event. The second coming of Jesus happens at the end of the tribulation period. And then he's going to come and every eye is going to see him. He's going to stand on the Mount of Olivet. He's going to judge the nations. Now I want you to read with me this yeah. This private event. In Matthew 25 verse 6. At midnight. Say midnight. They were roused by the shout. Look. The bridegroom is coming. Come out and meet him. All the bridesmaids got up and prepared their lamps. People. This is what we are doing now. We are preparing our lamps. We're getting ourselves ready. Then the five foolish ones asked the others, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. Now this foolish... Bridesmaids, these foolish bridesmaids, the word foolish there, if you go and search, search it out, the word used there is the word moros. From where we get the, the word moron, which means very stupid. <laughs> very, very, very stupid. Christians, very stupid Christians. Because they don't know what they've given up. They don't know what they've lost. Yeah. It's not time to be stupid. Amen. Amen. Say to somebody next to you, I'll rather be a wise virgin. I'll rather be a wise. I don't belong to the world. I've got nothing to do with the world. The world is going down the drain. My focus is upon Jesus. My hope is in Him. This world is passing away. In 2011, when I started preparing for the New Year's message, clearly the Lord spoke to me and said to me, the kingdoms of this world fumble, tumble, crumble. Immediately as I, as I heard the, His words, his, I saw like dominoes started falling. First of all, they fumble. Then after that, they tumble. And then after that, they crumble. 
it's like a process. That was 11 years ago. It's getting worse. But I want to say to you this morning, don't be disheartened because we have got hope. We've got hope and that hope is Jesus that is coming back for, for us. He prepared a place for us. Come on now. And we are going to get rewarded Amen. for our faith in Him. Amen. We are going to get rewarded for our works that we've done for them. We are going to get rewarded because we stayed faithful and loyal to Him and to each other. Can you say amen? amen. Let's give the Lord a praise offering. Let's praise Him this morning. Amen. Now these foolish virgins, they said, they said, please give us some of your oil because our lamps are going out. But the others replied, we don't have enough for all of us. Go to a shop and buy some for yourselves. But while they were gone to buy oil, the bridegroom came. Then those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast and the door was locked. So what is going to happen on earth? Seven years of total devastation, appearing of the Antichrist on earth. Judgment, but in heaven, a wedding feast. A we for seven years, a wedding feast. And the rewarding of the saints where we get our rewards from him. Amen. So, this is the private event, and I'll speak more about that. Now let's go quickly to the, the Gog War. When will this happen? I believe it will happen during the tribulation period. And I'll tell you why. Although we are seeing Russia moving now, getting ready, it is a sign of how close we are to the tribulation period. Because Russia is Gog. So, the Gog War, I believe, will take place after the Antichrist was revealed and he confirmed the Abrahamic Accord. You know that there is a peace agreement between Israel and some of the uh, Arabic nations that is called the Abraham Accord. Very powerful. And more and more nations are coming on board. And the next one I think will come on board is Saudi Arabia. Why do I know that? Because if you, read, if you read Ezekiel 38, you'll see that Saudi Arabia are amongst those who actually speaks against Russia and Iran and Syria and some of the African Muslim states. When they come against Israel, Saudi Arabia is part of those, the group that speaks against Gog when he comes like a cloud. I believe this will happen after the peace agreement was confirmed. Because the Antichrist is going to, when he sees the devastation that Israel caused by God's mighty hand, destroying Iran and some of those Islamic allies just like that, he is going to be very eager to sign or to confirm the peace, peace treaty with Israel. And he's going to allow them to rebuild their temple. And he's going to come to them as a Messiah. He's going to come as a peacemaker. And the world is going to love him. And we don't know who's the Antichrist. And we will don't know who the Antichrist is. Before he's going to get revealed, we are out of here. And we are going home. So we can speculate. We can speculate, but we can't say this is definitely Antichrist. But there's a good candidate that I can see on the rise and that is possible. And that is Zelensky of Ukraine that could become the Antichrist if he becomes part of Europe. He's a Jew. And I'm saying, I don't believe that the Jewish nation will accept any other nation or a person from any other nation as the Antichrist. I don't believe they will as the Messiah. I believe... The, the Messiah for the Jews must be Jewish. Amen. Let's read Ezekiel 38. Are you still following me? Kijk for me, I believe. Therefore, son of man, prophesy against Gog. Give him this message from the sovereign Lord when my people are living in peace. When my people are living in peace. This is the clue. 
Israel is in their nation. They, they're in their land. But they are not at peace. They, they've got a constant battle to protect themselves with, you know, with uh, the Iron Dome. And because every now and then Hamas or Hezbollah or from Lebanon, Fatah, all these, they, they just, you know, just, they just pour these uh, rockets, throw all these rockets upon Israel. So Israel is not really at peace at this moment. But there's going to be a time when Israel is going to be at peace and that is when they think their Messiah has arrived. They're going to open up and they're going to change completely because they believe that their Messiah is now with them. They are going to be in peace. And they're going to be in peace with all the nations around them and they are going to be very prosperous. And then all of a sudden, here comes Russia and Turkey and Iran. These three powerful nations. Of course, Iran would not be close to what it used to be. The leftover of Iran and Syria. And the Lord asked him, yeah, he said, when my people are living in peace in their land, then you will rouse yourself. You will come from your homeland, homeland in the distant north. We know exactly who this God is. In the, Russia is the distant north from Israel with your vast cav cavalry and your mighty army and you will attack my people, Israel, covering their land like a cloud. That time in the distant future. I will bring you against my land as everyone watches. Now by television, it's possible today to see that. By satellite, in those days, when Jesus, uh, or when the prophet uh, gave this word, it was not possible. But today it's possible through, through the media we've got. Everyone's going to see that. And my holiness will be displayed by what happens to you, Gog. Then all the nations will know that, that I'm Lord. The Bible said what God is going to do. I can't read the whole chapter. It's a long chapter. We'll be here until 2 o'clock. Next load shedding, you know. So I'm, I'm only reading portions. But I'm trying to, I challenge you to go and read for yourself. And you go and read it and ask the Lord to open your eyes, to give you some insight, to see how accurate the word of God is. He says there that it will come against my nation that I've gathered from all the nations and I've brought them back at the end of the days. I've brought them back to their land. And you're going to come up and I'll put hooks in your jawbone and I'll drag you out to come against them. Because God says, I want to judge you. See, Russia is killing thousands and thousands of people. They've killed all over the world. They've killed millions upon millions upon millions of people. And they think God does not exist. But there's a day coming for judgment. And God is going to judge Russia on the mountains of Israel. They are going to be totally destroyed. The Russian army is going to be totally destroyed. There's going to be a massive earthquake. And others, other things happening to them. When God intervenes to show His glory and, and His power to all the nations watching. And everybody will know that God is the God of Israel. Our God. I believe we will be sitting in heaven and say, Yes God. Yes Lord. Yes Jesus. Now. How does this fit in with Revelation? The book of Revelation chapter 6 verse 4. We see that there's a red horse going out. The first horse that went out is a horse, white horse that went out and it made peace, brought peace upon the world. This is the Antichrist that's going to go out and he's going to confirm the Abrahamic covenant and there's going to be peace in Israel. But now the next horse that goes out, the Bible says here, then another horse appeared, a red one. Its rider was given a mighty sword and the authority to take peace from the earth. And there was war and slaughter everywhere. So that war is, I believe, it is the Gog war. It is a war when Israel is at peace and he's going to take the peace away. This war, when Gog, Russia, comes against Israel. That's the second war. I can't say exactly when it's going to happen. The Bible doesn't give us the, the, so many signs there. But I believe it's going to happen sometime in the first half of the tribulation. And then the last war. The battle of Armageddon. Judgment. And that is going to be a public event when Jesus comes back. When all the nations have gathered against Israel to destroy 
God's people. And there will be the war of the Antichrist and all the nations coming against Jerusalem. Then the Lord will go out to fight against those nations as he has 14 times passed. On that day, his feet will stand on the Mount of Olives, east of Jerusalem. And the Mount of Olives will split apart, making a wide valley running through e- from east to west. Half the mountain will move toward, toward the north and half toward the south. You will th- flee through this valley, for it will reach across Azal. Yes, you will flee as you did from the earthquake in the days of King Uzziah of Judah. Then the Lord my God will come and all his holy ones with him. What happens then? After the seven year tribulation period, at the end of the seven years, when the nations have gathered together and even China has come up in the valley of Megiddo, that's why the war is called Armageddon. They'll come and they'll come against Jerusalem. And there's going to be a war. And Jesus is going to come and all his people, his holy ones, with him. Those that went up in the rapture, that will be you and me. Amen. If you believe in Jesus, are coming with him. And he's going to judge the Antichrist and the nations. He's going to judge them. And then he's going to set up his kingdom on this planet. And we're going to rule and reign with him. For a thousand years. Praise God. Let's stand for a moment. Next week, I'm going to help you to understand the so-called rapture of the church. Because there's, even in the body of Christ, in the church world, there's a lot of confusion about that. So where do we need to keep our eye now? We have to fix our eyes now on Iran. Did you get that this morning? I'm not so worried about Gog and even Armageddon. But the war with Iran for me is a signpost. And what I'm doing is... Can I say to you, I call it the ins, the in, 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 in. I'm walking in a close relationship with Jesus, in. I spend every day, spend time with Him. When I get time, I spend time with Jesus. I feed my my soul with faith. I don't watch this this track, what do you call it? Television. The stuff that they produce in the world. I don't watch that. I watch something that's good for my soul. That will build me up. Amen. I'm not unaware. I know what's going on. I'm in Jesus. I'm in the Word. I'm in the Word. I stay in the Word. I study the Word. I'm in prayer. I pray a lot. I pray. I'm in prayer. Amen. I am in church. Do you see me here? I'm in church. That's where I belong. I'm in church. I'm in the body of Christ. Say I'm in. I'm in the body of Christ. I'm part of the body of Christ. I'm not there, you know, living on my own island saying I don't need the body. I'm in Christ. I'm in the body. And uh, can you say amen? amen? I'm in the body. And I'm in cells. I'm in a cell. I need to be part of a cell. I need to be part of the body of Christ. Then I'm ready. Should we fear? 
No. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but we should not be foolish, utterly stupid. You know, Pastor Harold, you know, Pastor Harold, he's, he's my, my, can I say, I hear the guys speak of spiritual fathers. Now, if I have a spiritual father, it must be Pastor Harold. God is my father, but God uses spiritual leaders to help you. Amen. I've walked with Pastor Harold for 30 years. But he used to say, if you are ugly, you can do something about it. But stupid is forever. <laughs> I didn't say that, but he said <laughs> So we're not going to be stupid. We are going to be aware. We are going to be awake. We are going to be alert. Amen. I'm not going to miss that. Lord, I don't want to miss the rapture. I want to be ready. Amen. Praise the Lord. I hope I've stirred some hope in you. I'm, I'm a dealer of, of hope. I like people to have hope. Now next week, don't miss next week, because next week is going to take your hope level right up through this evening. Because I'm going to share with you from the Word of God. We've got a glorious hope. A glorious hope. Listen, if you don't stop me now, I'm going to get into that. I've got a glorious hope. You have got a glorious hope. I'm going to be rid of this, this body of mine that's getting weaker every day. No more pain. In a twinkling of an eye, God's going to give me a brand new body that's going to live forever. And Satan can't even come close. You say, Pastor, you must be crazy. Well, that's okay. I believe the word because the word is truth. 